Hello, and welcome to episode 33 of Sarastro's Star Wars painting series. In this episode, we're going to paint Greedo from Fantasy Flight Games' Star Wars Imperial Assault. With quite a unique colour palette, characterful pose and alien eyes, Greedo is a very fun miniature to work on. Let's take a look at the painting stages. I've chosen to prime Greedo in black and then spray on some zenithal highlights from above using grey and white. For a more detailed look at this process, you can refer to my recent Frost Giant tutorial. Priming in plain white, however, would also be fine. We'll then apply our base colours, followed with some shades, which I'll be applying mostly to select areas, which will reduce the amount of highlighting needed. We can then apply a few delicate highlights to the miniature, followed with some finishing touches that will focus mostly on adding some reflections to the eyes. Let's begin with the base colours. I'm going to begin by painting the jumpsuit with a roughly equal mix of Sybarite Green and Temple Guard Blue. When working over a miniature that's had a zenithal highlight, we don't need to aim for such solid base colours, and we can allow some of the underlying light and shade to subtly show through. I'm going to paint the yellow stripes on the jumpsuit using a mix of two parts Ogryn camo, with one part each of Flash Kits yellow and Ceramite white. For the belt and gun holster, I'm using Monfang Brown. I'm now using a 2 to 1 mix of scrag brown and towelite okra for the waist jacket. Next, I'm going to paint the boots using Storm Vermin Fur. And I'm painting the gun using a mix of Lead Belcher and Black. I'm now going to paint the eyes using a roughly equal mix of Nagaroth Knight, Black and Lead Belcher. I'm adding the Lead Belcher to create a subtle reflectivity. I'll be returning to add some manual reflections here later on. We're now going to finish the base colours off by painting the skin, and I'm going to be adding some pre-shade highlights a bit like we did for the Trandosians back in episode 8. I'm going to start by painting the whole area with a roughly equal mix of Cabalite Green and Sotek Green. 
As well as thinning with water, I'm also mixing in a couple of drops of Vallejo's glaze medium. This is to help me spread a more even thin layer over the skin, allowing some of the zenithal shadows and highlights to show through, especially on the head. I'm quite happy for this to settle more into the recesses on the head, leaving the protrusions a shade lighter. I'm now going to lighten this with some Ogwin camo and provide a broad highlight in a couple of stages. I'm taking some artistic liberty here by giving Greedo a slightly wider tonal range than he actually has in the movies. Notice that I'm not concerned with articulating the individual raised bumps on the head at this stage. We'll be returning to add some final highlights to the skin later on. Now, let's add some shade. I'm going to begin by thinning some Celia Green shade with a roughly equal amount of medium. I'm then going to use this to selectively shade the skin and the green parts of the jumpsuit. Notice that I've chosen not to cover the entire surface with this, I'm simply targeting the shadowed and recessed areas. This is a more time consuming way to apply the shade, the trade off being that we'll have less work to do in the highlighting stage. Two or three layers may be applied to deepen the tone.
I'm now going to apply some pure Agrax Earthshade to the belt and holster. I'm applying this neat because I want to darken the entire area. I'm now going to thin this with a roughly equal measure of medium and apply it more selectively to the waistcoat, once again gently building up the intensity with around two or three layers. Applying the shade like a glaze in this way allows us to create some easy and effective gradations like we can see here on the back. For the yellow stripes I'm using an equal mix of Cassandora Yellow, Athonian Camo Shade and Medium. The reason I'm mixing in the green shade is to reduce the warm orangey tone of the Cassandora Yellow. I'm once again adding additional layers to the parts I want to appear more shadowed, such as here under the left forearm. I'm now going to use some pure non oil for the gun and the shoes. For the shoes, I'm taking care to brush the shade off the top surface. Finally, I'm going to apply some Druki Eye Violet just to the edges and the lower portion of each eye. We're now ready to add some highlights. I'm going to begin by highlighting the yellow sections of the jumpsuit with the original combination of colours, except I'm using the slightly less opaque white scar. I'm now going to lighten this with some additional white. Next, I'm going to highlight the green parts of the suit using the original mix of Cabalite Green and Sotec Green, which I'm lightening with a little white. Because we were quite selective in how we applied the shade earlier, we don't have so much work to do with the highlights here.
We can now jump to some fairly small bright highlights to create the impression of a somewhat shiny leather finish. I'm now going to highlight the belt and holster using some XV88. This can be applied in a slightly more rough manner to create a more worn leather look. I'm going to lighten this with the addition of a little screaming skull. Along the way we can also reapply some Agrax Earthshade to tone the highlights down and create a richer, more multi-layered texture. I'm now going to highlight the boots with the original Storm Vermin fur. And I'm once again going to add some Screaming Skull to lighten things up towards the toe cap. For the waistcoat I'm going to use the original Scrag Brown and Towelite Okra mix, but with a more equal quantity of the Towelite Okra. and I'm going to finish the waistcoat off with some pure Towelite Okra.
Next, I'm going to provide a few small highlights to the gun, using an equal mix of Stormhost Silver and Carrick Stone. Finally, we're going to highlight the skin. Since we've already provided the mid-tone highlights, we just need to provide some upper highlights, starting with a roughly equal mix of Cabalite Green and Ogryn Camo. and I'm now adding some additional Ogryn Camo in a couple of stages. I'm going to pick out some of the individual bumps on the head with this. We're now ready to add some finishing touches. I'm now going to add some reflections to Guido's eyes. The metallic paint we used in the base colour has already imparted a nice metallic sheen, and simply adding a gloss varnish at this stage would give a perfectly good result. I'm going to go ahead and add some manual reflections anyway, just for fun. I'm going to start by providing a small stroke of towelite ochre near to the bottom rim of each eye. This is to suggest the reflection of the orange waistcoat. I've kept the paint reasonably thin so I can build the brightness up with multiple strokes. I might brighten this further in a moment. Now I'm going to add two small dots, one larger than the other, using white to suggest a couple of indoor light sources. My first dot, the larger of the two, is going to be in the upper right of each eye. The tricky part here is trying to get the eyes as similar to each other as possible. I'm then adding a second smaller dot lower down. I'm now going to brighten the orange stroke a little more with the towelite okra. And I'm carefully reshaping the larger glints to get them a little more even. Once we're happy with the eyes, we can go ahead and give the miniature a spray with some protective matte varnish. I'm then going to remove Greedo from his base and replace it with a more scenic alternative as described in episode 10. To see how I painted the bases, you can refer to episode 7. I'm now going to finish Greedo off by applying some gloss varnish to the eyes.
Thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed the video. To keep up with what I'm working on each month, or to share your own work with me, you'll find links to my Facebook, Twitter and Instagram pages below. My sincere thanks go to the generous patrons for enabling me to produce this content. If you'd like to help fund my work, you can do so by hitting the Patreon link, and contributing as little as one dollar. Join me again soon as we continue painting miniatures from Star Wars Imperial Assault. Happy painting!